Want to thank everybody who subscribed to Chat Sports during our NFL draft coverage. Over 4,000 new subscribers here at Chat Sports. Thank you all so much. We've got daily videos on our channel around the NFL multiple times each day. And when you first subscribe, your notifications are not set to all, which means you will miss out on videos from us here at Chat Sports. You will not get a push every time there's a new video out. The way to change that, go back to where you subscribe, that bell, click it, and change it to all. That way, you get notified each and every time we've got a new video for you here on Chat Sports. I'm Tom Downey. Today's video is a look at the top NFL trade candidates after the 2022 NFL Draft. I've got 12 names in total. We begin with the one who I don't think is going to get dealt. That is Debo Samuel. Ha the Niners had offers. The Lions made a big-time offer. The, um, the Jets did as well. They instead took receivers in the first round. So my guess, and it is a guess at this point, is that the Niners are going to try like hell to keep Debo happy and keep him on their roster. Maybe the A.J. Brown extension can help the two sides get closer on a contract. I know there's been different reports about what Debo wants. You know what fixes all things? Money in the end. So what is the percent chance you think the Niners end up trading away Debo Samuel, maybe the Niners now get, or the Dolphins get involved so they can acquire all of the dynamic receivers for that roster. Get your predictions in for me in the comment section right now. Let's go defense. How about Deion Jones? First off, this is an absolutely elite headshot from NFL.com. I love uh, the, the, the beanie look there. The Falcons are rebuilding. That is very clear. Now, they extended Grady Jarrett, and now I wonder what will happen with Deion Jones. Is he a piece of long term they have recently added some more linebacker help they were they went out there they were adding Rashawn Evans they drafted Troy Anderson they uh they have uh, Mikhail Walker I think I pronounced that first name correctly two years almost 28 million if he's dealt that's a pretty expensive fi figure but I think Deion Jones is still a really good football player. Uh, he is consistently around the football. His numbers in terms of the high-end production, tackles for loss, sacks, interceptions, those did dip this year, but I still think he's a damn good football player. So I would probably not trade him away if you think he fits your window. If he doesn't, time to shop him. James Bradbury, speaking of not fitting your window, the Giants, they have been trying and trying and trying desperately to trade away Bradbury with no luck. One year, $13.5 million. They could extend him. Sounds like he might be cut if they can't find a trade partner in the near future. Bradbury, the big-time pickup from Carolina a few years ago in free agency, was really good in 2020. In 2021 and into the early stages of the 2022 calendar year, um, he wasn't as good. Uh, the yards went up as the targets went up, but the yards per uh, or the yards per catch allowed also consistently rose too. I think he can still start for you, but the number one team that linked was the Chiefs, and then they took Trent McDuffie in round one. I'm not done with my list, but I want to hear your guys' now. Name a player who you think ends up getting traded this offseason. It has been a wild and wacky NFL offseason. So what's next? This question, a player you think gets traded, is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Offensive tackle Andre Dillard is next up here. He is best at left tackle. And the Eagles value having good depth on the offensive line like so many other organizations do as well. But he is a cheap and startable option for a team if you need a left tackle. I had mentioned Seattle, Carolina pre-draft. Then they spent first-round picks on offensive tackles. Dillard is not an elite run blocker. It's not where he's at his best. He's much better as a pass protector, but he can start for you. And I've seen some offensive linemen around the NFL, and it ain't pretty. Dillard would be an upgrade for several teams on the offensive line, especially if he's able to play left guard. Or left tackle, as you should say. Misspoke there. Jimmy Garoppolo. The Niners are also still trying to trade him away, and he's got a hefty contract bigger than Baker Mayfield, who we will get to in a minute. 
One year, twenty-five point five million. I think that the the Jimmy Garoppolo trade talks did not go the way the Niners thought it was going to. I think they thought he was going to be gone by the uh, opening of the new league year, and then he had the, the shoulder surgery, and I think that spooked off teams. And then the market got filled pretty quickly, and now Garoppolo is a starting caliber QB and would be an upgrade over others uh, in terms of the. Panthers and the Seahawks and their starting QBs, Garoppolo hasn't quite emerged as as a reliable starter quite yet in terms of what other NFL teams think about him. So that's kind of the the issue the Niners have run into. It has not gone according to plan. I don't love Jimmy G. He's maybe more like number 20 among QBs for me, but that means he's better than some of the QBs out there, right? The other big name at quarterback, Baker Mayfield. We know it's a matter of when, not if, he's done in Cleveland. The question is, does that come via a cut? Does that come via a a trade? Does it come via waiting an entire year until free agency ends up hitting next year? Baker showed the promise at the end of 2020. looked like he was playing legitimately as a top 10 QB. Those last, I think it was like 12 games, 10 games, whatever it was, can't find me 10 better QBs that were playing better than Baker. The issue is that was not the guy we saw in 2021, and the contract is a real problem. So who is the better QB? Ignore the contracts if you want to. Which QB would you rather have as your starter? JG for Jimmy Garoppolo or BM for Baker Mayfield? Sound off and let me know in the comments section. Nikhil Harry, let's get to some of the receivers, not named Jalen Rager, by the way, although he could also be included here. But Nikhil Harry, the former first-round pick, everyone knows he's bad. Uh, one year, $1.87 million if you trade it, so pretty affordable from that standpoint there. Nikhil Harry, in 31 games in his career, 57 catches, 598 yards, and four scores. If I told you that was Nikhil Harry's first season in New England, you would have said, wow, that's not great. Hope he plays better next year. That's his career of three years. He has been a colossal bust. And much like Andy Isabella, I don't think anyone wants these guys. They could very well end up getting cut. Isabella has not made an impact in his brief time in Arizona. I liked him a lot coming out of UMass. I said, hey, he's a really fast football player. I know he was an outside guy for UMass. He could play my slot or be a vertical threat. And he has not been able to. He made almost no impact last year. The problem is for Isabella, he doesn't have the route running to win in the slot. He's a vertical threat, and he can't track the football deep. The number of times, especially I remember it was against the Cowboys. I remember what game it was. Isabella was streaking downfield, just couldn't find the football. Just absolutely lost out there. There's a reason why Arizona added Rondell Moore and traded for Marquise Brown. Not because of DeAndre Hopkins. Part of that, of course, but because Isabella has been a bit of a bust there. So pick a wide receiver. If I made you trade for one of these two guys, who would it be? Type in NH for Nikhil Harry or AI for Andy Isabella. For the record, I'd probably rather have Allen Iverson on my team. Let's go defense now. LJ Collier. Again, there's a common theme right now. Former busts, but early round picks and the assumed talent or the presumptive talent might get you another shot. He can't get on the field either. Much like we said with Nikhil Harry, if I had told you Collier's first year in Seattle was 33 tackles, five TFLs, three sacks, you would have said, eh, that's not great. Decent promise for a guy. Maybe he breaks out in year two. And he, he's been bad. He's been real bad for Seattle. I mean, he was getting outplayed by fifth-round picks. Alton Robinson, third-round picks in Rasheem Green. Uh, they did not trade him at the deadline last year, but I don't know if anyone wants him in the end. Another former second-round pick this time around on the defensive line, A.J. Epinesa. He's actually done a little bit when he's been on the field. Again, hasn't played that much, but his numbers are pretty similar in two years to LJ Collier's in three years. So you'd rather have Epinesa there. The issue for Buffalo is that they drafted uh, Gregory Russo. They, they drafted Boogie Basham and then went out and signed to a big deal, Von Miller. So Epinesa, at best, is fourth on their defensive end rotation. It's not great. 
Maybe a team offers a mid to late day three pick and they say, cool, we'll take it, and we'll have some other guy as our fourth defensive end. The draft busts are the common theme of this trade targets because, you know, there aren't that many good players left to be dealt. So I want you to have some fun and call out your organization. Who is your team's most recent draft bust? Let me know in the comments section. Jacksonville could say a lot of different players, if we're being honest. This one is Kilavon Chasen. He has been in disappointment. Who I, I like Chasen a lot coming out of LSU. He is affordable, but he hasn't made the splash quite yet. Six TFLs, two sacks. He was always going to be a developmental player. Got to give him time. Got to grow and, and allow him to develop and become a, a better pass rusher with technique and whatnot. Hasn't gotten there. I would also argue maybe Jacksonville isn't the best spot to grow as a player. Uh, they're already on another new head coach since they drafted Chasen. So that's three in three years, by the way. It's not great for development when you're going through a new defensive coordinator every single year you've been in the NFL or close to it. One last sneaky name here, Terrell Burgess, the safety slash nickel corner out of Utah. The Rams have depth. They've got guys, uh, you know, they've, they, they, uh, they have, have invested in. Uh, I'll pull up the depth right here in a second for myself. But Burgess has been unable to, to get on the field, hasn't been able to pull it off in, in any capacity. He has been a, a disappointment from that standpoint. A guy that I liked a lot coming out of Utah, they have used Taylor Rapp. They have used Jordan Fuller. They, they made him a 20. He was the sixth-round pick to Terrell's third-round pick. Fuller's beat him out. Nick Scott has played more than him. Then they drafted Quinton Lake as well. There's a chance that Burtis is safety five on this roster this upcoming year, which means – they could very well say, ah, we're not, so let's trade them away and get more of those day three picks. The Rams say F those early picks, but they like to have a bunch of day three shots in the dark. So I would not be shocked if Trail Brutus gets shopped. He is the last of those top 12 trade candidates after this year's NFL draft.